Hello, sir. Hello, everybody. Hey, how are you doing? Hello, sir. Good to see you. So, who is this free soul? I need, I need to see. Uh, I have yet to see a free soul in this world, you know. Who is this? Uh, the free soul. So, do you think that you are a free soul? I have yet to see a free soul, actually. <laughs> Okay. So Sanket is a free soul. Great. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Thank you. You know, let me, let me tell you one thing. When I was very young, so I, that, you know, I wanted to have long hair, you know. And then my father said that, look, son, it is very difficult for kids to maintain long hair. So probably you should not have long hair. Okay, wonderful. Life is great. So could not have long hair. Very good. Then, you know, time flipped and came high school. And in high school, I was in a wrestling team. So, and again, I wanted to have like long hair. So uh, wrestling coach said that, man, look, if you want to have long hair, there is no place for you in the wrestling team. So you cannot have long hair again. And time flipped again. Now I'm married, having a daughter, a son. And again, I told my family that, hey, I'm going to have long hair, like shoulder cuts. So my daughter said, look, the moment you're going to have shoulder cuts, I'm going to have Y cuts. So, <laughs> so, so the problem here is that there is no free soul in this world. I said that I have yet to see a free soul in this world. <laughs> okay. So let's start today's lecture. So what do you want to study today? Yes. Do you want to select some topic? No? Nobody wants to select? Okay. So this is the agenda for the day. I will do a little bit of uh, a little bit of function examples, right? And then I will divert to uh, actual web project involving JavaScript. Why? Because I have seen this thing with experience that once you start teaching someone pure pure JavaScript, it becomes very quickly boring. Right, people, you know, people expect to from JavaScript that it is going to have some kind of action, right? And once you know we, we are teaching theoretical kind of JavaScript that action is absent, and that you know definitely cause boring within folks, right? So most of the time I would like to teach JavaScript via some you know thrilling project, right? So let's start making a project and then we'll see that where it goes, right? But before we start that thing, let me uh, teach you a little bit about functions and then, you know, we'll go on, right? Okay, make sense? Okay, let's come over here. Um, so maybe, uh, let's create a new folder. So, oh, can you see my screen, please, by the way? No. So, share screen. Share. Now you can see my screen, right? And let me open this. So, I wanted to create a folder, right? Yes. So, maybe set, or maybe JavaScript set. Interval. Right? JavaScript set interval. So let's see what is this and how does it work. So we come here and we create a new file. This name say front end. Front end dot html right and uh, 
And then let me have a JavaScript here. Uh, new file. And here let me say that uh, main dot js right main dot js okay here i'm going to do a few things the one more thing i want to do is let me rename this and let me say set into and let me have the player concept also here right so let's see what what we are talking about here so go to front end dot html let's put the boilerplate code for html you know that i have just heard that html 7 have also been released right html 7 has also been released okay and you know things would be a little bit more tough for the developer you know but this is good that we would be all in jobs you know okay we have to learn some new features of html 7 right so life in IT is like this, you have to learn all the time. Okay, so maybe in H1. Let's learn more about functions. Please open console to see the results right so you know just in case and uh, let me have a script tag over here and i don't know why does it write out the script tag source is equal to Main dot yes. So every day you must interact with me at least once, or you must remind me that I have not asked you a question which you have to answer, right? So that I can mark you. So if I miss to ask a question from you, so you would be missing. Right, so please, in every lecture, just remind me that, hey, professor, you know, I have not been asked a question, okay? So, so basically, you know, source main.js, and uh, let's go ahead and open this page in browser. Okay, so, HTML, right? And let's open the console. Mm -hmm. And let's go to console. There is nothing in the console for now. Okay. So this is our main JavaScript file. So I have uh, told you some concepts about uh, functions, right? For example, if we want to have a function like this, right? Say it's console log I am a function, right? If this just sitting this function like this, you know, I am a function, right? So this is a function without a name. Such functions are called anonymous functions, right? Such functions are called what? These are called anonymous functions. So if we have a function like this, and if we go ahead and run this code in our browser, you'll see that nothing will happen, right? So rather something is wrong here, function statement, uh, what is this saying? Requires a name, right? So it is saying that it is an anonymous, anonymous function just sitting here you know, without any context. So basically it requires a name, right? So one thing is that it requires a name. So if we want to give it a name even, right? So any any name, 
right? So now this is a function with name, but still, you know, it is sitting here, not doing anything, right? So it is sitting here, not doing anything. Now, the deal here is that if we want to run this function, right? Say, for example, at the time that it is, uh, it shows up, this function shows up, we want to run it. So we have to enclose it in parents and then put these parents after it. And these parents after this function declaration, actually these are the one which will run the function. So this function is now called a closure, right? This function is called what? This, call is, this is called a closure. And if we want, we need not to give any name to the closure, right? So once we say this thing that this is the function and we want to run it, right? So at the, at the time of its encounter, so it will run. So let's say we come over here in line number one and here we log this thing that start, start of the main dot js code, right? And then it will, this function will run, okay? So we come over here, reload it, right? Uh, missing name after dot operator. What is this error? You know, where are these errors coming? So why is this missing dot after? Oh, okay. So this should not be an issue. Where is the error coming at? So in a form, inside the function console dot. Uh, number dot three, line right, number three. Yeah. Okay, let's see what is the issue. Uh, oh, console log, sorry. So here it should be log, console log, right? I missed the word log, okay? So we come back over here, reload it, and you know, start of the main.js code and I am a function. So now this function is running, right? So this ki kind of situation is known as closure, right? So here we have enclosed a function within brackets, right? And made it auto running. Right, so you cannot reach this function from outside, but as soon as you will encounter this function in the flow of the program, it would run, right? This concept is known as what? This concept is known as closure, right? We can send certain parameters to the closure also. Say for example, we can come over here, we can say const place is equal to Kingsville. Right? And I can come over here, say I am living in, right? And then we can have a plus sign and we can have parameter P maybe. I'm living in P. And here we can pass it over here, place. So the deal here is that once this function would be encountered, so whatever over here is, it is assigned to this. And then it would be executed, right? So let's see, let's run it and see that what happens. So I don't know why is this, situation going on like this. So const place is equal to Kingsville and I need to have a semicolon, definitely. But semicolons are not that issue these days. So let's see, right? So that semicolon was causing problems. So I'm living in Kingsville, right? So let me just combine the two. Okay, so basically it is running. Okay, so let's reload it and I'm living in Kingsville, right? Let's have another parameter added so that you can understand this thing also that how can we handle multiple parameters, right? And I can say cost from is equal to India. Right, so we can say maybe another parameter here, F parameter, 
and we can the second one is going to go from you know this one and we can say i am from this and living in here, right? So let's save it and let's run it. Reload. I don't know, <laughs> sometimes, you know. Okay, why is this issue, tell me. After F, there should be plus. Yeah, after F, there should be a plus, right? This plus is missing, right? Very good, save it and let's come back over here. And let's reload it. So I'm from India and living in Kingsville, right? So this is this is how we deal with the closures, right? This is how we deal with what? Deal with the closures, right? Let's come over here. So for example, let's do one more thing. Say for example, we have a function. So say for example, we say it is tell name right and it has a name and we say that console and you can understand this thing the console log is just a symbolic thing we can replace this console log with any code right we can replace this console log with any code right so we can say console log name right so basically uh, uh, it is going to tell name so we can say that my name is that's this right you can definitely use uh, compose strings like back text right okay but you know we can use these uh, traditional ones also both are good so function tell name and uh, this function is telling the name right so let's have another function and this function is going to say that tell place and name and we are going to send it place variable right and we are going to send it tell tell name function right so we are so basically what is this function getting this function is getting a variable place right and uh, and it is getting a function tell name right and as we come over here right as we come over here we make a string right and the string is the msg with the name msg is equal to So let me make this message, right? And then I'm going to return tell name I'm going to return tell name rather let me do this thing I'm going to return a function, right? I'm going to return a function and this function is going to call
tell name for for a for a message or for a name right and one more thing that here before it tells name it can log i am from this place right i am from this place and uh, definitely a plus sign and then it will tell the name right and this function is going to have an input name right so can you understand what's happening here please look at this piece of code a little bit more carefully and see that what's happening over here so we have a function with the name tell name right we have a function with the name tell name right and it just logs out my name is name right whatever the name is right now we have we want to decorate this particular function with something else right say for example we want to make a function who is going to tell the place before telling the name right who is who is going to tell the place before telling the name right so basically we want to decorate this function and we don't want to write this code within this you know function right and we want to rewrite this re reuse this code which we have already written in line number 10 to 11 uh, 10 to 12 right so the idea over here is that once a function can do something and you want to have a function which can do something extra right so basically we are passing that function into another function which will decorate that input function with something extra and return that function back to us right and return that function back to us right so basically this is the entire idea and if we want we can do this thing we can put this name over here We can say right, we have made it a function expression. Right? And now and now if we do this thing that if we if we give the place right so basically if we give the place over here right maybe place is india right which is which is de declared over here so this will run and it is going to return this particular function to tell place name right so basically uh, let let me do this thing for you so i will say let now tell name is equal to just run this function so for place we put the place and for function we give the tell name now it is running right and once it runs it is going to give you a function back for example if i console log now tell name 
it is going to have a function, right? So let me, uh, you know, put some console log over here so that you can see the demarcation. Let me save it. Let Sir, me... name is not defined, I guess. Say it again. Name. We didn't give any name. No, we didn't give a name. Yes, definitely. So look, so what we have got over here is my dear, we have got a function, right? And this function, this function is, is tell place and name, right? And basically it is going to, so if we run it, right? If we run this function, let's see, it is going to take one argument, which is name, right? And now if we run this function, look, if we run this function, now you will understand that what I was doing over here. So if we run this function, now tell name and give it a name, right? Say for example, uh, Camelish. Now it is going to give you, tell you the name, right? So save it and run it, right? So my name is Camel, I am from Kingsville and my name is Camelish, right? So basically we had a function which can do one thing and we pass that function into another function who decorated that function with some other functionality and returned it back, right? And returned it back. And once we got that function, so now we have return value, you know, normally in other languages or, you know, in other workings, we see that return value is normally what? It is normally some kind of number or some string or some, you know, attribute, right? But here we can even have a function back to us as a return value, right? And once you got a function as a return value, right? So basically, uh, you you can run it and once you run it, it will do whatever it needs to. So I just wanted to, you know, I, in every lecture, I will uh, do a little bit of abstract for you so that you are ready for the node part. And in the rest of the lecture, I will do some project for you so that you can feel good about it that, you know, we are working towards web programming, right? And definitely be careful, be, uh, uh, you know, you must be clear about this thing that whatever I'm doing abstract stuff with the function, this is also very important for the understanding of uh, Node.js, right? So if you are not very good at JavaScript, it's very difficult to steer through Node.js thing, right? So we need to have some extra knowledge for JavaScript in order to understand that how does Node work, right? And then this knowledge is going to help you if you take your track towards Angular, right? Or Ionic. Okay, so let's go and uh, make a small project today using all this information which we have shared so far. So let's make a new folder here. <coughs> new folder and let's name it Krausel one. Right, so this is Krausel one I'm going to make for you. And uh, for the Krausel, I need to have, sorry. so Krausel is like, you know, I'm going to make this Krausel, you can see. And I will explain it to you that how does it work. Let me take to this website, take you to this website. And here you can see that this is one Krausel running here. Right, so I say that it is heartbeat Krausel. Right, so one image fades <coughs> down and the next image comes back, right? So we want to make a Krausel like this and then we'll, we are going to make other sort of Krausels also, right? So let's start building such a Krausel. So first thing we need to have to make a Krausel like this are images, right? Images through which we want to Krause, right? So we come over here and let's, let me find out some images for you. Mm -hmm. 
And these are the images I'm going to use throughout. So for example, can you see the word clausal here somewhere? Mm -hmm. Uh, can you see the word slider somewhere? Right, here it is. Okay, let me pick these assets. So these are like one, two, three, four, five images. So let me copy this folder from here. Copy. And I want to, con you know, your code to be self-contained. So I come over here and where are the clauses? Yeah, this one. And here, let me paste it. paste okay so these assets are here and let me create a folder over here new folder and let me name it heartbeat right so i'm going to make this heartbeat clausel over here so for heartbeat clausel let me make a new file and this is a index.html let me close the rest of the files okay and let me have another file over here new file and let me name it main.js Right. Let me go to HTML file and make the boilerplate code. So for example, I say that HTML and let me put H1. So let's just, let's make heartbeat clausal. Right, save it. And this is where our clause is going to sit. And let me make a paragraph after that. This is just filler text. Right. And let me make a divine over here. And let me decorate it with the class container, right? So this is a class container. And then let me have another Deviant over here. And let me decorate it with the class image Deviant. Image Deviant. And let me let me have an image setting over here and its sources. So what would be the source? So images are sitting here. So for example, if I want to have zero, how should I mention this source? Please let me know. Zero dot JPG. So JPG. if I say zero dot JPG, right? Zero dot JPG and our text is uh, say, image zero right save it and let's open it and see that nothing will happen so we come over here let's open our code right and this is heartbeat okay so this is image zero alternate text is showing up right and uh, nothing else is showing up image is at least not showing up so who will fix this issue, please? I, I will score for it. Everything is right in front of you. Sir, if we keep that image in hard builder, then hmm? we can give 0.jpg. Say it again. We can keep it's that in, image folder. in hard bit uh, folder. We have image in the separate folder, right? So basically, this is normal organization that we need to put various assets in separate folders. 
and we need to know that how do we traverse from one folder to the other folder so we will give the path slash asset slash yeah so so how how you are going to do it please let me know slash assets slash oh sorry so i have to come over here so sanket is telling so slash assets slash 0.jpg slash 0.jpg slash right? right so should it work everybody yes sir any issue with it okay if it will work right there will be an image to show up right so if we come over here reload image has still did not show up so food first uh, slash will not come huh the first power slash will not come okay. no save it <laughs> if it will run right so we reload it sir i think we need to dot dot different also huh we need to give the like uh, carousel one dot dot one dot uh, two dots or dot, three dots dot two dot slash dot slash yes do you think it two dots two, two dots who said no, two dots fine pedvi did you say two dots yes sir uh, why would you say two dots In the terminal, when we want to go to the back directory, we will use cd. So definitely, space, the same two dots mean one directory back, right? So you are basically yeah. in the heartbeat folder. So you go one directory back, you go to browser one folder, right? And then from there you go to assets folder, and there you will find the zero dot jpg. Now it should work, right? So we come back over here, reload it. The image is here, right? but image is going beyond the boundaries right so the question here is that uh, how are we going to fix this thing that it is going beyond the boundaries right who is going to fix it for me with 100% with 100% very good right so i think that we link a style sheet over here right so we come over here we say link and let's link a style sheet and let me put the style sheet in the same folder as the html so master.css so let me create a master.css right over here so new file and let me name it master.css right so in master.css the first thing i want to do is to Uh, have box model fix right who can quickly tell me not not looking around but quickly tell me that how can we do box model fix yes please i w- i want to start typing dot con right what should i say box sizing border box right and what else Uh, asterisk semicolon asterisk asterisk comma my dear right comma, aggregate yeah. is comma right comma yeah. asterisk colon colon after comma asterisk colon colon before right and box sizing inherit right okay great so let me uh, html is misspelled html thank you very much i appreciate right and here i just make a comment that this is box model fix right so in the place of html can we use body yeah we can use body also yeah. thank you very much yes okay but uh, this is given by paul irish as i mentioned previously so please refer to paul irish and do whatever he is doing because probably he is doing extra effort to search for it you know that uh, what is this box model fix and how is it amicably working right and i saw that it evolved over the years right not so recently but previously right okay so once we have done so next thing we want to do is to bring the image in in container right so we come over here we say that we want to decorate image but not every image maybe the page is going to have so many other images so maybe that image which is sitting in image dvn 
right dot image to be in and then that image right and we say that hey you take your width of 100 percent right you take the width of 100 percent and uh, we can do this thing we can say dot image dvn right your width is maybe 80 percent your width is 80 percent and uh, you have you have a margin of uh, zero space auto so top bottom zero right and uh, left right auto so you know margin auto means that both sides are going to have same kind of margin right and then we do one more thing here that image dvn you take a padding padding of 10 pixel right just want to give it a beautiful padding so that you can see also from there and say for example i want to say that you are going to have a border of uh, three pixel solid pink right so let's see how does it look like now reload right so you can see that it is coming together right it has started coming together this image is you know very sensually sitting in the right place we want it to sit so what should i do next okay get, look once you are doing css you know there should be one thing which should be very clear that can you feel that there is something out of place here Once you are doing CSS, you must have the eye of a designer. What is something off? Can you feel that this, this the side padding. padding is little more than this padding over here and this padding over here? Why is it so? Break. Huh? Break. Yes. Space is space is there. So space is like five pixel all around. So why it is or ten pixel all around? So why is this bottom taking more space? Yes. Sir, between tags, there must be space. So we have to give backslash. Where, which spa space you're talking about? We have to check. Yes. Where div ends and tag, div and tag. Huh? or para para if we can take it one line up look let me do one more thing uh let me do this thing that let me let me use container to reduce the width right so let me let me do this thing so just you know you keep on thinking about it and i let me do this thing let me have this container to take all these attributes, right? And uh, that tween I'm going to use later on. So we come back over here, reload it, right? It is still, you know, the same. And this space is still here, right? I have purposely switched the tweens, right? I will tell you that what right. why i'm using going to uh, what is the purpose of that image to be and i'm going to use it for the border is uh, i guess border is taking a uh, uh, pixel so this reason is very simple so let me tell you and i have mentioned it to you so many times so yes. the deal yeah. here is that uh, font size zero 
right? Same. Because of that enter sign, right? That small enter is taking space, right? So we come back over here, reload it. Right? You can see that you now you can feel the difference, right? That everything is like kind of uh, taking the even space, right? Okay. So now what should I do? I want to put buttons, right? I want to put buttons. So let me put buttons. So I come over here in HTML and let me put buttons, right? Let me put buttons over here. So I say, button. So type is button. Name is, so since I'm not going to send it anywhere, so let me remove the name, right? Type is okay. And this is going to be my left button, right? And uh, let me put another button. And uh, let me remove this name. And this is going to be my right button, right? So since I have got these two buttons, let me reload it. Right, so these buttons, left button and right button, they are sitting in their order, whatever wherever they should be, right? But we want to put them right over here, right? So if we want to put them over here, first let us give them height and width, right? So we come over here and we say that those buttons which are sitting in the image DVN, right? So I come over here, I say dot image, Dvn and button. We want you to take a width of five vw and a height of ten vw. Right. So once we do so, let's reload it one step at a time you know it is the best policy so one step at a time so we have got these buttons right according to size let's put proper arrows uh, over here so we go to google say that html html characters uh, special characters and Let's go to this website and let me see. No, not this one. Does, is it giving us uh, some good arrows? No. So let me come back. Let me use this. Okay. Okay. Let's use this, right? So maybe this arrow left arrow, this is the right arrow. So for, okay, where it has gone. Okay. So this is the left arrow. So it is at less than LT, right? At LT. So I have to use this, control C. So we come back over here in what is this? This is index.js, right? And this is our index. And for left, we say less than. And for the right, we say greater than. Save it. Go back. Reload it. Right? So we have got proper arrows. We are going to set the font size. So we come here in CSS and we say that, hey, you buttons, your font size, your font size is, sorry, size, your font size is uh, to RAM, right? You know this thing, RAM will work here, M will not work here, right? Or maybe 2VW. Save it, come back here, reload it, right? So they are bigger arrows. 
Now I want to position these arrows right in the middle of the image, right? Left side and one on the right side, right? So tell me that how should I do? Who is going to tell? So I want this arrow to come right over here and this arrow to come right somewhere over here. So how is this going to happen? Bottom 50%. Or height 50%. 50%. Bottom, bottom 50%. Bottom 50%. So bottom property, do you think bottom property is going to work like this? So if we if we come over here and we say, hey, you take a bottom of 50%, right? Something like this, save it. And I hope that they are not going to even move from their place. Um, position absolute. Position of absolute, 50. right? So the deal here is that once you want to use these, these properties, top, left, right, bottom, right? So they work only for, and Z-index also, they work for positioned elements, right? So you need to say that, hey, you buttons, you take a position of absolute, right? You take a position of absolute. But do you know that once we say that something is taking position absolute, so it, how is it positioned? It is, is it, it is positioned to a, a position reference to what? It's parent. Its parent who is who is also positioned, right? Yeah. So we need to have a parent who is also positioned, right? Otherwise, it is going to position relatively relative to the body, and this is something we don't want, right? So we come back over here. So who is its uh, parent? So parent is image domain, right? So we come over here. We say dot image domain. Right, your position is relative. So relative means that you know if you don't move, I'm movable relative to my current position. But if you don't move me, I will not do anything. I will not move. Right. So we just you know say position relative because we are going to use position absolute here. So we come over here. We say position absolute. Now, once we say position absolute, then they are going to move, right? And now they are going to move and they are going to move from bottom by 50%, right? So save it. And so just, you know, just for your uh, knowledge sake, you know, just, you know, don't say bottom for now. And we come back over here, reload. So you can see that these buttons are sitting somewhere, right? These buttons are sitting right over here wherever they were, right? So let me, let me show you, inspect elements. And where are the buttons, right? So inspector, let's go over here and find the buttons. So they are sitting in this division and this division, and then we have this button. And you can see that they are sitting right over here in the sequence because, uh, because this image, after this image, there is some space and this is in line element. So they are sitting in line with this image and they are sitting right over here, right? So now we have to fix them and we have to say that, hey, you better position yourself. And we come over here, we say, hey, you take a oh, control Z. We say that you take a position from the bottom by 50%, right? Save it and reload it, right? So positions from the bottom, right? So they, are, they have come over here. But the deal here is that this lower edge is sitting at 50%, right? So we want the middle should be at the 50%. So what should we do? Yes. 50 minus something. Say it again. Who said this? So 50 minus the five uh, five VW or five VW very good excellent and then that's it we have to enclose it within parent 
and then we have to use calc calc function right and calc function needs to have space over here and space over here right so save it and now if we go back over there reload it right now they are sitting in the center and now we have to you know position them uh, in a horizontal way also so we come over here and we say go to html and in html let's have a class over here so class is equal to left button and then we have a class over here class is equal to right button right save it and reload no 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 need to reload for now so let me decorate uh, let me write these classes also so i come over here i say i say dot left button your left side is zero right and then we say dot right button our button spellings are wrong thank you very much right button your right is zero save it and reload it right now you can see that they are sitting at the right position right and if we want we can decorate them further a little bit so that just they look good so it would be better to work with them if they will look good so where is the button so this is the button we say border none and uh, for left button we say border radius so which border radius so border radius so for left button is top right radius top right radius is top right radius 100% uh you can say 100% space 50% and then we have border bottom right radius Right, so bottom 100% and right 50%, right? Save it, let's see that we have got proper shape. Reload, right? So we have got proper shape. And similarly, we uh, shape up the right button also. So copy, paste, and this is top left. and then bottom left right and let's have a color which is transparent so background color rgb alpha maybe 205 comma 205 comma 205 comma 0.3 Save it. 
reload right so we now we are ready so let's do one more thing let's decorate them with a pseudo class uh -huh. i want to unfold them and they are kind of folding so image dvn button colon hover and if you learn SAS, you know, you can have a better experience with this, this thing which I'm doing right now. But there are so many things to them. Right, and then we do one more thing. Then we do one more thing. And we say active. Save it and reload it. So this and upon, okay, upon being active, we want to make it maybe 0 0.8. Save it. Reload it. Right? So basically, buttons are like visually working. Right now, we want to wire JavaScript with them, right? So we want to make a wire JavaScript with them. So we come over here. So in main.js, right? So here we want to get hold of what now? Button, click buttons, right? So we need to get buttons, right? So for example, we say let left button. So let left button is equal to document dot query selector. So what should I give as a query selector, please? Tell me. Button. Button? Button ID. No, I don't want to give ID. Button dot left button right so button dot left button so means that get me that button which is decorated with the class left button right and then uh, let's have the right button so let's say that this is the right button and button dot right button right so we have left button we have right button right what else do we want here yes so we want to play with who function, huh? when, function when we click on the button so so function is going to do what Change images. Image, right? So do you, don't you think that uh, we need to get hold of image also? Yes. Right? So yeah. who is going to tell me that how to get hold of image, right? So for example, let me have the image, right? So main image. So let me have main image, right? So how I'm going to get hold of main image, please. That's image. Hmm? Image dot class name. Uh, image dot class name. I have not decorated uh, that image with any class. Just image, right? Huh? Just image then. Then image is good, right? Very good. So the deal here is that I might have other images. So maybe I say image division, right? And image division space image, right? And what is wrong here? What's wrong here? I need to have dot, dot over here, right? Dot, dot image view because it is the class name, right? Dot image view and space image, right? So I have got the image. So let us see that, I, am I getting the image actually? So maybe I get this console log. So I say mean image. 
I console log me an image and I come back over here and inspect the element. And I reload the page and see in the console that what is being logged. So let me reload. Didn't I link the JavaScript yet? Probably not, right? So let me come over here in index.html and right at the bottom, let me have the script and the source over here is What is the source? Source is main.js. Very good. Main.js, right? Save it. And uh, once you have saved it, let's go back here and now let's reload. Right? Now you can see that I have got hold of this image, right? And this image has so many different properties. And the property I want to get hold of is, is this source. Look, it is, they are alphabetically ordered. So SRC, SRC, look, this is source, right? So it is telling us that from where this image is coming, right? So it is source. So I want to get hold of this source. What is the source? So I come over here in main.js and say main image dot SRC, right? Once you want to get hold of a property of an object, main image is an object. And once you want to get hold of a property of an object, so it would be dot source, right? Save it. And now let's run it and see that what do we get now? Now you see that you have got this entire string. Right? Now you have got this entire string, right? So the deal here is that now what should we do? We want this thing that uh, as we click the buttons, then something happens, right? So as we click the button, something happens, right? So question here is that what should I do that, uh, you know, these buttons get some functionality? And click on button. Uh, we can yeah, so, the... so we have to wire some kind of event listener, right? So right. we have to wire event listener. So we come over here and we say, so let's, you know, remove this uh, line. We say left button. And click. Dot add event listener, right? Add event listener, right? And what do I want to listen? Click. I want to listen a click, right? And once this click, you know, is there, I need to have some functionality, right? I need to have some functionality, right? So this is something we need to do uh, Need to do once there is a click, right? And what functionality is there? So first of all, I want to get hold of the string. So I say source image, image source, huh? image source is equal to main image dot src, right? So here we are going to get hold of this image source. So once we have this image source, and similarly, you know, in the right button, we are going to do the similar thing. So, and then later on, we are going to merge them, right? Control C, so let me write the code for right button also. So this is for the right button. Add event listener, click, and then, you know, get hold of the source, right? So main image dot source. So once you have got the source, say for example, we, uh, we want to use right button for the timing. Let's develop the right button and later on we will develop the left button. So main image dot source, right? And now what should we do? So everything is in front of you and just you need to advise me that what should I do now? Replace the uh, image with main image. Say it again. Uh, replace the current replace image. the image, right? Replace the image which is currently 0.jpg with 1.jpg. Very good, right? So, so let me log here. 
and see that what have, what we have got, right? And then we will see. Control C, Control V, save it. And uh, we have wired this thing with the right button. We come back over here, reload it. And if we click right button, you can see that this click is working and you are getting the source, right? This click is working and you are getting the source, right? Now question here is that not right over here, instead of this zero, we want a one over here. And then after that, we want two, three, four, five. We want these numbers. So question here is that how are we going to isolate this zero over here? Uh, we can do that like uh, we get the current image number and then like increase by one. So yeah, you're right. So the deal here is that we need to use a method over here, which is known as slice, right? So let me show you that how does this slice work, right? So I say let initial INIT, initial image source is equal to image source dot slice, right? So slice is a function. And we say, say for example, we want to say that, hey, uh, slice starting from zero, ending up to 10, right? Or maybe ending up to five. So starting from zero and cut up to five. And let me console log whatever I got here. Copy, paste, save it, come back. Reload. Once I click the button, can you see what I have got? I have got character 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Up to 4, up to this colon. I did not get fifth, right? So once we say dot slice, so slice is going to cut starting index to the ending in index, including the starting index, excluding the ending index, right? So question here is that what index should I give now? 10, 20, 30, how much? So deal here is that one thing is that you can roughly do that. Okay, let me start counting 0, 1, 2, 3, tuck, 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 up to here, right? So basically we can do this thing, but this is not the best idea. One thing is that counting can be disturbed. The other thing is that look, here your link is like local host something, something. But when in actual, this code is going to run into a page, the URL might be entirely different. And it could have altogether different length. It could have altogether different length. And once it is going to have altogether different length, there is no use to do this counting from the left, right? But there is a way in JavaScript in all these modern languages that not only we can count from the left, we can count from the right also. So for example, this is zero index, this is one index, but this is over here is minus one. This is minus two, this is minus three, this is minus four, this is minus five, right? So I say that cut from zero to minus five, right? So instead of saying cut from zero to five, I say cut from zero to minus five. So let us see what do we get now? So reload it and click. And now you see that I have got all the initial string. <coughs> I'm sorry, right? Now I have got the, uh, the entire initial string, right? I come back over here. Let me have the mid part, right? So let me copy this, control C, control V. I say mid image source, mid image source, image source slice. Now I want to slice from where? I want to slice from minus, minus four to minus five, right? Minus four to minus five. And then I want to slice from minus five onward, right? Control V, and this is an image source. So here I say slice from minus five onward, right? Save it and let me cons console log all three of them also so that we can see that we have got the right catch.
And here we have the end. Right, save it, right? And now let's run it once more. And you can see that how does console log help us to understand our code. So is it the right thing? No, I have not got the right thing. So let me see that what's wrong here. So I need to have up to minus five. And okay, I actually made the mistake over here. So minus five to minus four. Lower to bigger. Right, and then minus four onward. Save it and reload. Look, console log is telling me every point of the time that you know what I'm doing, doing wrong. So you can see now that I have got the initial part, I have got the middle part, which is zero, and I have got the end part. Now, what should I do now? Uh, replace zero with one and again content display. Yes, replace zero with one and then you know do something. So I come over here and I say mid image source plus equal to right. You know plus equal plus equal to what? Plus equal to one. Right. So we are adding one into it. Right. So main mid image source plus equal to one and now we reconstruct it right so we say let's reconstruct it we say image source is equal to initial image source plus mid image source plus an image source. Save it. Let's remove it all. And let's see now what did we get? Save it and we come back, reload it and click. So have we got the right thing? No. Zero Why one. not? It's a zero one. Zero one, it's right? Zero one. What what we were we expecting? Just one. Just one. one, right? So it means that what has gone wrong over here? We have to convert cast to integer. Very to good, made. right? So we have to cast to numbers, right? So we can say that this is a number. Right? Uh, mid image source, you are a number, and then plus one. Save it, right? And let's run it once more just to see that are we getting the right thing now? And once we click, are we getting the right thing? Yes, yes. now we are getting the right thing, right? Let's click once more. So, click once more. So basically, we are getting still the same thing, right? Because we have not changed the original source yet, right? So we come back over here. And now this is the time that we should do what? So we have made the string and we say, what should we say? Yes. Inner.html yes. is a class dot inner.html is equal to like Image source. Uh, look, we, we have this we have this main image, right? This main image is there. Yeah. Right? So we That's say so. main image is, is dot image. source is equal to image source. Image source. Right? And once we have done it, now hopefully it should work a little bit. Reload. So we come back, click, look, images are changing. Can you see? Images are, oh, what has happened? What has gone wrong here? We didn't have six. Huh? We didn't have six dot like. 
It's yeah. Continuous. So we don't. We have zero dot jpg. We have one dot jpg. We have two dot jpg. We have three dot jpg, and we have four dot jpg. We don't have five dot jpg, right? So question here is that what should we do now? I think we need to put in loop. Put in loop. So loop. What is what is loop going to do, and how is it going to help us? Uh, uh, we can like give a if condition if we reach to uh, number four, then we again uh, again assign the value to zero. Like. So you know, question here is I don't want to use if. For condition. Hmm. For loop. I don't want to use a for loop either. <laughs> Yes, what should I do then? Who is going to tell me? Maybe we can change the number in the slice. What do you mean by this? Yes. Hey, Shilinder, would you like to answer this question? What should I do? I'm thinking, sir. Okay, let me ask. Sanket, you have a solution for us. Pridvi, do you have a solution for us? No, sir. Menthan. No? Murali the Reddy. Ankit Rao, you have a solution for us? No, sir. Kamalesh, do you have a solution for us? No? Yes. You, you guys are good developers, I know. But why is this thing, you know, that you don't have solution for this simple problem? Sir, after last image, we can give a destination of first image, main image. Or is, somebody is going to sit over there and put it for us? No. <laughs> Yes. Naresh, would you like to answer? I'm thinking, sir. Shilinder? Bharat? Sir, I'm also thinking. Um... Dhanush, this is Dhanush? Yes. Anybody? Okay. Well, guys, this is a very simple solution to this problem is modulo 5. Don't you know mod operations in math? Right? The remainder operation. So remainder gives you the solution to this problem. Right? You, you can also say this thing that number of number of images, right? And let us define this number of images up there. It's numbers. Number is missing. Uh, N is missing, right? Number of images, right? So now you will see that it should work, right? Save it and let's reload it, right? It should reload it. And now we click. So click, 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 right? It's working. Can you see this thing? The numbers are flipping without any issue, right? As it goes to four, it spills back to zero, right? So no if, no else, right? Use if else, save if else for bigger thing, right? These small things don't need if else, right? They need some little bit of mathematical manipulation, right? Get hold of these things, okay? Got it? Okay, now if we want to do reverse, so we have to, let, let me copy this code for now into write one. Right? And then we are going to do something. So in the right one, we have copied it, right? And now, what change should I make over here?
for the left one? Huh? Minus, minus, minus one, one, right? So instead of plus one, I need to have a negative one. Right? Instead of plus one, I need to have a negative one. So let's see that does it work. So we reload it, right? We reload it and we see that right button is working, right? And left button is working. But now it's not working. Why? Because of the because zero of minus, what? Zero minus one. Because minus zero one. minus one. Very good. So the question, so the problem here is that JavaScript is not that good with Modelo, or you can see that you know uh, JavaScript uh, once it takes the Modelo, for example, a Modelo of negative one would still be negative one instead of four, right? Modulo of negative two would still be negative two instead of uh, uh, three, right? So basically this is the issue with JavaScript. So how can we resolve this issue? Who is going to tell me this thing? We can like uh, JavaScript as a function of more. So it will convert minus value to positive. Yeah, you can use mode or I have another solution, my dear. Very good. I can copy this. And paste it here, right? And I paste this thing over here, right? So by pasting this additional number of images over here, what is going to happen that now the number would never be negative, right? Then now the number would never be negative, right? Save it and let's run it. Let's reload it. And let's run it, right? So left button is working, right? And you can see that my right button is also working. Left button is working and right button is also working. Now the question here is that this is actually, this entire code is now against the principles of uh, modular coding, right? What should we do? So maybe here we need to cut this entire function out, right? And put it somewhere here, maybe over here. And let's name it flip, flip image, right? Let's name it flip image. And here, instead of giving, you know, like minus one, I gave a direction. Maybe DIR is good enough. And instead of negative one, I have plus DIR, right? And you can say DIR for direction, it, can be one or negative one. So commenting is always good. And once we have done so, so ideally we should do something like this, right? And here I have to call negative one, right? But the issue over here is that now this will become a function call. I don't want it to have to become a function call here because I want to call this function at the time of click. So solution to this problem is that I just cut it from here. And here I put an anonymous function and within that anonymous function, I make this function call. Right now, once the click would be made, this function would be called. And as this function would be called, this statement will run. Similarly, I can come over here and I can just remove this entire function from here and I can put this function, copy this function from here and paste it right over here. And here instead of plus one, uh, minus one, I give plus one. Are you getting me, guys? Right, so basically now this, this will work 
and now this code is very you know got smarter because now this function is sitting at one place and we are calling it for both the directions any questions so far any question no sir okay save it and let's run it you know our ultimate web test is running once we run our code we get to know that everything is hunky dory right so we reload it and so right one is flipping left one is flipping right right one is flipping left one is flipping and now right one is also flipping right without any issue so in today's lecture we have made this you know little spot uh, you know carousel without any big things right into it uh, it is not dimming yet right neck like in the next lecture we'll see that how can we make it like it should fade in and fade out right that is our next step but at least you know our images are flipping as we want them to flip anybody who feels like that he or she is ready that i ask questions to them about this lecture yes shilender you are ready okay good so i during the course of this uh, lecture you answered some questions so let me just uh, unshare my screen and let me put some scores for those people who i think already answered and then i will uh, you know put scores for other people so sanjana where are you so sanjana is absent today right uh dhanush dhanush where is dhanush yes sir yes you need to talk <laughs> so let me know okay dhanush so tell me that uh, how did we position these buttons today uh we we used uh width uh what do you call it bottom okay let me do one more thing right let me do one more thing since this is uh just going to everybody so uh -huh. just give me a minute uh let me stop recording